Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. You will never guess where I am. I'm home. I'm at Abifrawan and Ismon, the Isle of Anglesey, and ooh, the mist is rolling in. I'm here today, running around the stones of Truindi, an ancient Iron Age monument that there's not much left of it, but what is left is really fun. I'm off to see the druid, the wonderful druid of morn. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. You'll never guess who's here with me. I'm here today with Christopher Hughes, my friend and chief of the Anglesey Druid Order. Hi, Chris. Hiya. Down. Do me down, my pile. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So I'm going to avoid direct eye contact with Chris because his face is right in the sun. It's not because I'm being rude, it's just because I don't like the sunshine apparently. Well we do live in Wales. Yes. <laughs> we don't see it that often. We're used to the greyness. <laughs> Today a witch and a druid joins you to talk about the difference between druidry and witchcraft. So Christopher, seeing as you are the resident druid of Anglesey, the chief of the Anglesey Druid Order, can you explain to us in as few words as possible or in the most simplest form possible, what is Druidry at its core? So Druidry is a spirituality that is based within the Celtic cultural continuum. It's inspired by the ancient Druids of the last Celtic Iron Age, but it's also inspired by the Middle Ages mythology and poems from Wales and Ireland and Scotland and Cornwall and Brittany and all of the Celtic lands, but primarily the Anglesey Druid Order is Welsh-centric, so it focuses on everything that is Cymraic, everything that is Welsh. So that's our main source of inspiration. And it's, it perceives an element of the spiritual in nature and is predominantly animistic. And the majority of Druids, I would say, are also polytheistic. Mm. So one thing I've noticed is that, and from talking to you and from talking to people online, is that the Anglesey Druids tend to get a little bit of flack for being a little bit too witchy. <laughs> 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 yes, we do. We do get a little bit of flack for that because our practice is very much rooted in magical transformation, transformation of self and transformation of the world around us. So that's a really important function. And I mean, I mean, look where we are. It's just so much magic within this landscape. It's very difficult not to bring that into the practice of our druidry. So, um, so when people say to us that, um, oh, you appear very witchy in your druidry, my answer to that is a resounding, yes, yes we do. <laughs> I think it's one of the reasons I always loved coming to the Anglesey Druid Order. So I, I've mentioned this in previous videos, but I'm going to mention it again because I love talking about it, is that when I was a teenager, I came across the Anglesey Druid Order on you specifically, and I started attending a lot of the rituals that you do. And obviously I was more intrigued and interested in witchcraft than druidry yeah. and I didn't feel like druidry was quite for me because I was seeing a very specific stream of druidry that wasn't um, as I suppose magical I, I don't want to offend any other druids by saying that but wasn't as magical in nature but when I attended the Anglesey Druid Order's rituals and open rituals and such that you um, did <laughs> at like Brinkahidhi and sacred sites across Anglesey I felt this deep connection to the land and to the magic of the land and I suppose that matches with what we're here to talk about today which is what is the difference between witchcraft and druidry because coming from a Welsh cultural context a lot of people do tend to ask like, what is the difference I mean yeah. what because as a Welsh witch I talk about a lot of concepts that are found in druidry such as yeah, yeah. the Awen and you know the deities of Wales such as Ceritwen which come from like the bardic traditions and such yeah, as well yeah so what would you say is the main difference if is there any difference between um, I think the difference is uh fairly subtle so so in my opinion um, and some people I don't know some people might not agree with 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 this opinion but I consider witchcraft to be a praxis I consider it to be a practice it's a very practical approach to um, a, a craft that utilizes natural phenomena natural forces powers of nature gods and spirit and, and as such, those practices and elements of those practices are incorporated into many expressions of Druidry. So I would consider that Druidry is um, a devotional practice for a lot of people. 
and a celebratory practice for other people but to me it's all of those things so the the druidic element of my spirituality is the is this profound connection that i feel to this ancestral stream that still exists today but that witchcraft or swing gavarev in kamaraik is a practice within that druidry so and and ultimately that if you consider um even the term suin or suin gavarev in, in Welsh and the word witch in English, there's an implication there of something that is wise mm. or the, the, the utilization of wisdom or the promulgation of wisdom. And what I love about the word derwiv in Welsh or druid in English is that it essentially means those who are oak wise, those who carry the wisdom of the oak. So I love that that stream that comes from the past but it then blends itself in them and when you consider you know Gerald Gardner Ross Nichols they were the best of friends and Gerald Gardner was high up in the in a druid order called the universal bond and he introduced Ross Nichols to it you know so it was a witch who introduced a, what was what was to become a druid into a druid order and then from those two you have these great traditions that we enjoy today you know and so many people get so much from them so 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 i don't think there's enormous differences i'm very happy and i love the practice of witchcraft of swing of Arif, but i'm also happy with that being a, a vital component of my devotional practice as a druid i think there's been a lot of talk lately within witching circles of the importance of understanding that you know Antiquity does not always equal authenticity, that things don't have to be ancient in order to be authentic and true and real. And we talk about this in regards to witchcraft. We talk about how, you know, the 20th century saw a boom in witchcraft and a change in how people perceived witchcraft and practiced witchcraft. But we don't see that talked about much within druidry because people seem to be stuck with this idea that druids are things of the past. And I saw it recently, somebody reached out to me and said, I'm reading about druidry and it's making all these connections to, you know, like almost to use a word that I don't really like to use too much, but shamanistic practices yes. of other indigenous cultures. And it's also talking about, you know, how the druids would have lived back in the day. But the truth is we don't know very much about how they lived or what they believed. And we forget sometimes that even druidry in its modern form is modern. It's modern. And yeah. in many ways, druidry and witchcraft kind of came at the same time didn't they there yeah. was influences yeah. from both onto both so we're obviously inspired by um the past but we're not products of that past and we certainly don't need that past to authenticate or give give the vitality that this tradition requires today and if the druid tradition can be given a, a a stamp a date of birth if you like the modern tradition then it would be 1792 on primrose hill in london on june the 21st by a crazy fabulous welshman called yola morgamuk who who started who is the father of modern druidry as we know it today so and i think people seem to to not understand that modern druidry is that it's modern it's it's inspired by the past it's inspired by the welsh badic tradition who in its literal form has existed since the seventh to ninth centuries so you have these streams but it is essentially a product of the modern world made applicable to modernity because we don't have the same power and tribal control that the ancient druids had we're not the same people and that's not to say that you know i'm, I'm possibly i've just had my genetics done with 23 and me and I'm 100% of the British Isles with the majority of my genetics being here in London so there's a good chance that the Druids who were buried on this island were my ancestors mm -hmm. but I still don't need that to authenticate the practice of my Druidry because they probably wouldn't recognize my practice of Druidry today because it is a product of, that is applicable to the 21st century and inspired by so many rivers but it's um you know, and my druidry is just as old as I am. Yes. 
And I saw Christopher's genetic print and he is very much 100% that druid and 100% that witch. I don't know yeah. if that's mathematically possible, but he is. <laughs> so what I'm hearing is that you can still practice magic and be a druid. Yes. You can still be a witch and be a druid. Yes, You can be yes. both at the same time. Yes. So we have witches and Wiccans who are members of the Anglesey Druid Order, you know, and who are very comfortable being in those two not that, they're not dissimilar worlds and they're very comfortable being in both. Yes, and I think there's wisdom to be gleaned from both because I've had a lot of, um, not a lot, but a little bit of criticism for being too druidic in my witchcraft and you've had <laughs> criticism <laughs> for being too witchy in your <laughs> druidry. So it's almost like people need to realise that these paths can correlate and come together and be unified in many ways. Mm. Well, there's so many crossovers as well. There's so many periods where bridges were made between those two traditions that I, I, I personally don't think that you can separate them wholly. You know, that they're, they're so beautifully interwoven, like, like elaborate Celtic knotwork. So something that I've come across a lot, a little bit of discourse that I've seen online, is this notion, this idea that druidry is more authentic than witchcraft because it's older. What do you personally think about that? No, no, not at all, because again, they came from the same cauldron pot. And if there's, if there's anything that we can learn from antiquity, it's that when the druids were eradicated by Rome or integrated into Celto-Romano culture, and then we went through the crisis of, um, you know, Wales losing its independence and the huge cultural changes when Britonic became Old Welsh and all of these things that happened, then if, if the wisdom of the Druids went anywhere, it went into the Hyd Athedrith, into the magical traditions that were here in Wales, we're obviously talking about Wales here, and that, um, and that the, the craft of the, those ovatic arts that we may, might associate with the ancient Druids were held in the power of the village witch, of the village cunning man or the wise woman. So they, they, they filtered through into those elements of society. And then hundreds and hundreds of years later, they raise their heads and then suddenly there's a new Druidry and there's a new expression of witchcraft. So I think the history is extremely complicated and interwoven. You know, and that one is not older than the other, one isn't better than the other, and neither is that different from each other either. It's just that in Druidry, the focus is usually, especially in my form of Druidry, it's predominantly Celtic. And of course, mine breaks that down further to being predominantly Welsh. Come right. Oh, lovely. So you've heard it from the chief of the Anglesey Druid Order himself. You can be a druid, you can be a witch, you can be absolutely anything you want to be. Oh, thank you so much for coming today, Christopher, and imparting your wisdom in this quick video for us. Dedicated. You're very welcome from this <laughs> glorious, glorious place. Absolutely. Oh, thank you so much for watching and we will see you very soon. If you'd like to see more of Christopher, there will be links to some of his socials down below as well as some of his books that you can purchase as well. Hulvaur. Hulvaur. Tra. <laughs> oh. Oh my god, where's the button? I don't know, I don't know how to sit. Like, <laughs> just, <laughs> very, yeah. so you've disappeared now. I can't see you beyond the muff. <laughs> beyond the muff. <laughs> Heard that before. <laughs> There'll be outtakes from this video. There will. <laughs>